the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth the scripture stands written one day with our lord is equal to 1000 years and 1000 years in the sight of the lord is equal to one day comparing this to our life in this pilgrimage trip on this earth a short span of time which our lord leaves us and keeps us alive on this earth to which to the status of maximum glorification of christ to the daily intake of bible doctrine and to leave behind in this angelic conflict a legendary impact so that the angels can learn from your life conduct apostle paul said i have been made a spectacle to this people the great things when you and i need to note in this church age we have been made a spectacle to this people as well as to the angels who constantly observe us either or not we are really reaching the maximum glorification for christ if we neglect this simple great truth the time that you can compare in the sight of lord 1000 is equal to one year one day how much more great it will be in the sight of our lord to count this minute fraction of time that we are going to survive in our bible which tells to us minimum 70 or maximum 80 that too with great pain and great trouble in this 70 years to get to believe in christ to give importance for doctrine you will require a minimum 20 years of your life right from your birth to waste around to think along and to follow pray along in this lost patterns of this old sin nature but if you strongly and adherently stick to the grace of god and to live a life that is countable for you if you can know that life then you will avoid those things which are necessary for glorification for christ and he will put upon those things which are really glorifying my christ and we have a great passage which tells to us in proverbs 23 26 give me thy heart the question put to elijah was what are you doing here is a good question for us to ask ourselves in ecclesiastes solomon deals with this question he the richest most powerful and wisest man at that time was able to experience matters in relation to this question and was thus qualified to reflect upon the answer and the question after considering many aspects of life in wealth pleasures wisdom education power fame and whatever entered into his imagination he concludes that all is vanity of vanities it is like chasing after the wind but then he warned that there is a god and that one must be conscious of the fact that one day there will be an encounter with god and there will be a judgment all things will be brought to light and put on god's balance for god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing ecclesiastes 12:14 and recommended that this be considered and applied to our lives when ang to save us from shame and hardship this would provide eternal benefits rejoice ang man in the youth but know that for all these things god will bring thee into judgment in ecclesiastes 11:9 furthermore so the question is why am i here where why are you here is it to satisfy the desires of our heart to do what we want or is it to have a good job or a comfortable family if we seek only those things while on earth then solomon says vanity chasing after the wind but our lord and savior jesus christ said that his desire was to do the will of him that sent him in john 4:34 and that he had glorified the father on earth and completed the work which the father had given to him in john 17:4 like the lord we are not here for ourselves but to bring glory to god not by your tight of 10% of your income not by a few hours of time on sunday and perhaps throughout the week or even at a bit extra in some special service to him no god desires our hearts give me thy heart furthermore 
we have there are many exhortations in the word of god for us to rejoice and there are many reasons for us to rejoice and here are the three main reasons concerning the past it could be our sins are forgiven concerning the present he promised that he will never leave us and concerning the future we shall be ever with him and this is what you will have in Christ but the world doesn't promise you these reasons the world doesn't say for you to rejoice in the lord always the world doesn't say for you to rejoice evermore the world doesn't say for you that the joy of the lord is our strength but rather we will look in we will look at the things pertaining which is not at all pleasable in the sight of god do you know dear brethren when you believe in the lord and savior jesus christ the joy that you can gain by the sins that you have been forgiven that alone should be a constant source of joy for you if you realize the bad situation we were in and the horrible eternity that awaits those who die in their sins we would be always rejoicing and thankful to the lord for the forgiveness of our sins by the great sin will be that we never fail to believe in Christ because the world may call the people whom they love and the world the, the world that loves is rejection of Christ but what do we have we have Christ in us the hope of glory there cannot be a greater sin than this that the people love hatred the people love the true love of Christ and they hate love the hatredness of satan the true love of Christ and the hatredness of satan is what is always a constant attitude where with your eternal life will be depending your attitude towards the love of Christ is your eternal future your eternal life and the love towards the satan the hatredness of the satan though it appears now in the pseudo transformation as love that is real hatredness for you to note and this real hatredness that these people love to note is really as a great lesson for us to consider and get back to the truth the sin which has been forgiven only when you believe in christ and when you take your attitude towards our lord and savior jesus christ our lord promised to never remember or bring back the sins and transgressions of his people in hebrews 10 17 this is not wishful thinking it is a fact based on god's word and psalm 103 12 says as far as the east is from the west so far have to remove our transgressions from us and that get the holy spirit uses many other metaphors to impress this truth on us in micah 719 he says that god casts all his sins of his people into the depths of the sea if he casts them there who can bring them back in isaiah 44 22 he says i have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression and as a cloud thy sins for how redeem thee and in isaiah 43 25 i even i am he that blotted out the transgression for my own sake and will not remember thy sins spade space does not permit listing all the verses that assure the believer for the forgiveness of their sins and by just faith alone in christ alone how well they have been saved the believer can boldly say therefore being just justified by faith we have peace with our god through our lord and savior jesus christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of god of romans 5 1 and 2 what a great lesson that we need to understand dear brethren for rejoice and our sins have been transgression our sins have been forgiven and now you will live a life a life that has to be pleasing to christ and how you are happy enough that your sins have been blotted out as far from the east to the west and as far it has been put down into the deep of the waters and as far it is for the name for the sake of for the name of our lord and savior jesus christ he blotted them out so far should be now we built back the true happiness of jehovah in our life as we are happy that our sins have been forgiven so as we grow up in the daily knowledge of bible doctrine lord will be in return happy that this is my child who is growing up in the knowledge of christ and this is my child where with our lord wants to bestow his eternal peace and make a permanent covenant with thee as he has made in the old testament times i'm using it as a metaphor and i'm telling to you so that you can understand the true bondage the true true peace and the true love that we can acquire through the knowledge of bible doctrine alone therefore dear brethren why do you want to chase behind the wind and why why do you want not to give your heart to lord and pursue the vanity of the vanities but rather dear brethren look upon the true rejoice that you can find that your sins have been forgiven and now you are in christ and your salvation being secured and what is that lord will be happy on behalf of us so that we can tell in return the joy of the lord is our strength and that could be nothing but bible doctrine 
So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to believe, telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment to salvation. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great man, it is to grow up in great, is to. Kerusothorn Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because for the diamatrum of witnesses by which they have been called. The great diamatrum of witnesses is nothing but indwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and the witnesses being our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our hearers. And what do we look for? We look for the truth, the truth that we can get along in Bible doctrine. And for the believers, the great merit is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Know the contrary of your reality. A lesser time on this earth with great suffering and pain to learn the word of the Lord, and to sacrifice everything, and to live a life of great honor and glory in heaven, rather than wasting our life in these worthless and useless things, and nothing to have show forth in your heaven. And that is what it will definitely happen if you die without Bible doctrine. There is no evaluation except for you to have the except only one great thing that is the resurrection body and apart from that you don't have any decoration to show for it and furthermore we do have one more great thing that we need to learn that this world can give us this world can give us only sorrow but we have true peace a true peace in Christ and that is not possible if you fail to take daily Bible doctrine so which way you want to go you decide dear brethren we shall come back and continue tomorrow Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. We thank thee for thy words. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.